Hey guys, it's me, 1239 here, and I'm here to give you guys my Anna Green Gables The Musical Toronto review. So, <laughs> so I went to go see the musical for Anna Green Gables in Toronto recently, and I am so excited to do this video because I never thought I would be able to do something like this. It was really cool, and I hope you guys like it. Let's get started now. One night in April, I remember venting to my sister that I would never be able to go see the musical in PEI because we weren't going, and we haven't been there, obviously, in a few years, and I didn't get to do anything Anna related which I regret now really wanted to go see the musical obviously who doesn't even now I still don't know when I'll be able to go back if I do and then the very next day my sister sent me a text how there was going to be a musical in Toronto it was perfect it was absolutely perfect and I don't know how that timing fit so well with me venting to my sister the day prior but it happened that way I immediately bought tickets <laughs> to go see it it took place on August 16 the very first night because that's how excited I was for it so then fast forward forward to August 16 and I took my dad to go see it with me. We arrived there and I was wearing my aunt shirt, the one that says my life is a perfect graveyard of buried hopes because obviously that is such a mood. <laughs> I attempted to take some pictures outside front, right, because they had the title and picture and that was iconic and we had to rush though because the musical was just about to start when we entered. <laughs> the bathrooms there are gender neutral, which I've never experienced before. I do go to a university that has gender neutral bathrooms, but I've never been in one, so that was really interesting. We grabbed two programs at the front desk and then we entered wait i still have i have the program let me go find it so then we grabbed two pro oh my god i forgot to close the door we grabbed two programs at the front desk and then we entered the theater and grabbed our seats and there were people of all ages which was so cool <laughs> to basically see that older people are still interested in Anne. Anyway, so the show began with an announcement, the territory acknowledgement which is basically about the importance of being aware of indigenous presence and land rights. This is usually something that is said during lectures and public events. I've heard it spoken in my university but my dad has never heard of this and after the show my dad told me that after hearing the territory acknowledgement he was surprised that the show was made up of an entirely white cast. The dichotomy was really compelling because we hear the acknowledgement of indigenous presence and then we start watching a musical just solely about white people in indigenous land. That was the interesting thing. And for that reason, he was really excited that Anne with the Knee season three is going to include indigenous people. And I completely agreed with that. I'm just gonna put out a warning right now that from this point on, I'm gonna be talking about the show in depth. So if you're someone who lives in Toronto and hasn't seen the show, I don't know if you guys care about being spoiled Spoiled, I guess I don't know but I'm just gonna put that announcement in right now I mean if you're watching this video then you probably want to hear about the in-depth analysis I have about the show <laughs> I don't know I'm just saying and I'm basically going to be doing this by categorizing my review into separate sections and now let's get started the bloopers this was my dad's first ever musical which was pretty cool he wasn't expecting it to be so close I don't remember what bro we were in but we were pretty close and the whole venue itself wasn't that big so he was really surprised at how close the actors were to us and they were looking like straight at us you know <laughs> he initially believed that they were lip syncing but then quickly realized that that wasn't the case i will admit i did see them mess up a bit but honestly nothing is perfect and i still think that they did an incredibly wonderful job <laughs> they were so professional about it as well which i think is the best part whenever you mess up i know that from band experience whenever you mess up you just gotta keep going and that's what they did so to give you an example mrs spencer's hat fell off during one of the scenes and during the next scene people were kind of kicking it around trying to grab it and so when they finally were able to grab it they just continued going like nothing had happened that was really great or when the actor who played matthew began saying a line that he wasn't supposed to say yet the actress who played marilla interrupted him said her line and then he was able to say his line the way it was supposed to go <laughs> i think during one of the scenes someone's wig flew off but i'm not entirely sure i don't know if i saw that right because i wasn't really paying attention that much and then a lot of things were going on I'm not really sure like don't quote me on that but if that did happen that would have been hilarious to me it would have been such a meme. <laughs> My dad also noticed that towards the end of the show, the actor who played Mr. Phillips's mic fell off and so his voice wasn't projecting as loudly as he could have, but I honestly did not notice that and I thought the show still went on beautifully. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the gossipers. Okay, so as we all know, Rachel is the biggest gossip in Avonlea and this musical shows that so well. <laughs> I really enjoyed the actress's performance as Rachel. I thought she was a perfect fit. She made me laugh so much. We had a moment with with Anne after Anne apologizes for calling her really mean things after she called her mean things, which uh, 
whatever. Anne was like, you know, she was so extra about her apology, you know how it is, right? Rachel felt so like moved by Anne's performance that she like got down on her knees right next to Anne and started crying with her, like bawling her eyes out. And it was so funny. That part was hilarious. It was probably one of my favorite parts of the entire show. <laughs> there are two parts where the gossipers, meaning the women in Avonlea who liked to gossip with Rachel, had me in stitches. <laughs> one was where they started making up rumors that Anne had beaten up Gilbert so badly that he ended up going to the hospital with head trauma and the way they were like giving it their all you know like it was so funny the song itself is hilarious that was amazing <laughs> The second scene I really liked was when, after Diana drank the raspberry cordial, which was secretly wine, the gossipers were like surrounding Marilla and telling her, you have to throw that away. And then they, <laughs> and then they all end up drinking it together, you know, and that was funny. <laughs> they were criticizing Marilla for having current wine in her house, but then they just, they wanted a sip of it, you know? You know what I mean? That honestly left everyone in the audience laughing so hard. The singing and dancing. The choreography and singing of these classic songs were so incredible. They were so beautiful, like so beautiful. Everyone had an incredible voice. Obviously they have to, but they were just so good. Anne's voice, top notch. She was great. <laughs> the dancing was so energetic, especially during the scenes with the students. Those flips, they have to do flips. They have to do all this choreography and all this running and dancing and just moving so much. And, and there were two scenes, especially the first scene where they're all like going to school and stuff. And then the second scene was when they're doing the egg spoon thing and they had to do all this choreography. I was like, wow. <laughs> This was definitely one of my favorite parts about the fact that this novel was turned into a musical. I think it goes so well musically. Since all the songs were the same ones from the musical in Charlottetown, and I made a video last year, which I'll link in the description box below, where I reacted to some of the songs, I actually knew them and I was like singing along a little bit, you know, in my head and kind of mouthing the words. <laughs> it was so much fun to see those songs performed live. The Anne and Gilbert moments. <laughs> I always feel picky when it comes to Gilbert because I think Jonathan played him so well in the 80s version, as well as Lucas. They both fit the description so well, but they both have very different ways of playing him. Regardless, I still feel very picky about who plays Gilbert. They both have the curly hair that Gilbert is supposed to have, while this actor in the musical did not. But regardless, I think this actor did a phenomenal job playing Gilbert. Gilbert putting a frog inside of Anne's dress was the height of teasing and banter to me. <laughs> like, I was shook. 2017 Gilbert would not have done that. You know, that was playful Gilbert, which I think the 1980s version of Gilbert would have done. I did feel kind of weird how they included the what are those reference in the Slade scene when Gilbert is like, he's pointing to Anne's hair and saying, what are those? I know it's supposed to appeal to this generation because there were a lot of kids there, but I felt like it took me out of the musical. I don't know, like it kind of felt weird to me. I guess I'm too old now to understand that joke. I didn't really like that part, but I get it. I get it. However, I did like the scene where Gilbert first notices Anne. That was so cute. Anne and Diana are walking together to school and then he kind of is like walking and then he kind of turns and sees her and he's like, like, who's that? You know, that was so cute. You know, because you already know that they're going to get together. But then seeing that scene is like, that was him falling in love. I love at first sight. It was so cute. My sherbet heart literally fluttered. It was so great. The Wondering Song is one of my favorites from this musical because it's sung by Gilbert about Anne and he's wondering things about her. He just met her, so he doesn't know that much about her. And he already messed up by calling her carrots and pulling her hair. So he has so many questions about her and he wants to, you know, be with her. After Josie wrote Anne without an E. He ended up writing the E after singing the song and that was so cute. <laughs> and also one of the very last scenes is where Anne tries to give Gilbert her scholarship to Queen's Academy. Then they finally become friends and Gilbert kisses her on the cheek and that was so so cute. <laughs> I'm gonna be saying that a lot. It was really cute even though obviously the slow burn was thrown completely out of the window but I still really liked it. It wrapped it up very well because obviously the musical only covers the first book so I understand. My Sherbert heart Heart still screamed OTP goals. Sorry, bloaty. The lost scenes. There were a couple scenes in the original storyline that didn't make it into the musical. Of course, they can't add every single scene from the book into the musical because that would be so long. But I still think that they should have included the scene where Mrs. Barry prohibits Anne from seeing Diana again after she accidentally gets her drunk. Because this conflict doesn't exist in the universe of the musical, we don't get to see Minnie Mae get sick and Anne cure her, therefore redeeming herself in front of Mrs. Barry. I really would have liked to have seen this acceptance from Mrs. Barry towards Anne 
and some scenes were altered to adjust to the musical aspects such as the ice cream scene. The brooch scene wasn't included either, which is a classic part of the original story. Also the boat scene, but this isn't the first time I've been disappointed with that. It's fine. <laughs> the emotional parts. There's obviously a lot of sentimentalism when it comes to this story, mostly from Anne, but the scenes that were most memorable to me when it came to vulnerable scenes actually come from the performances of both Anne and Marilla. I really do applaud these actresses for portraying these characters so well, especially during their crying scenes. When Matthew dies, Marilla has to do this solo and she actually tears up. Like, I, I could see, like, because I was so close to the stage, I guess. Like, I wasn't that close, but I was pretty close enough to see that the actress who portrayed Marilla was actually crying and it was so emotional and so heartbreaking to see. Also when the actress who plays Anne cries that was incredible like I, I don't know how they are able to cry on command but I guess that's something that you learn with training. It still mesmerizes me. <laughs> Matthew's death almost came as a surprise to me. I know that's weird because I should expect this by now. Matthew's gonna die. I'm still not over that but the fact is, is that when Anne gets the scholarship to go to Queen's Academy I thought that was going to be it because I thought they're gonna end it really happily and all these kids are not gonna have to see Matthew die but then they just hit us with that scene and that was so so sad. I think I actually saw someone next to me tearing up it was very well done. A good story knows that there are ups and downs in storytelling and that mirrors with life. So after Anne won the Avery scholarship, there had to be a tragedy that would bring the mood down. So it was just expected for Matthew to die. The scene where Anne gives us the scholarship in order to stay at Green Gables was so beautifully done. It reminded me of this argument made by Margaret Atwood in which she said that the real love story in Anne of Green Gables is the one between Anne and Marilla and not Anne and Gilbert, which I thought was so interesting when I read it and seeing this musical actually showed me that because the last scene in this musical is between Anne and Marilla and that was so so sad and so but it was so good it was so good and I was like you know maternal love and acceptance Anne and Marilla have impacted and changed each other the most they only have each other at this point to grieve the loss over Matthew they will continue to be kindred spirits until Marilla passes I love that this musical ended with Anne and Marilla holding hands and smiling at each other it was beautiful and enduring I know I keep saying beautiful a lot but it was it was beautiful <laughs> so the moral lesson I learned while watching this musical, after the musical ended, my dad and I drove through downtown to go get some dinner because we were hungry. As we were driving, my dad commented how Anne kind of reminds him of Lily Singh. I know I have to mention my queen because she's my biggest inspiration, obviously. <laughs> I've learned so many life lessons from her, so here is one of them. What reminded my dad of Lily from this musical and story overall of Anne is of Anne's journey of rejection and hate to love and acceptance by her community. Something that Lily taught me is that hate is inevitable so the only thing you can really do is continue to be yourself and eventually everyone will have to accept you for the way you are. Anne is the perfect example of this. She embodies this so well not only in this play but in every single adaptation of the story. That was such a strong reminder of why I adore Anne so much. She received so much judgment from everyone at the very beginning until people start to see that she's not all that bad like she might be quirky and she might be outspoken and loud and talkative but at the end of the day she's just a child and she's learning and she's growing up and she's maturing and she is very smart and kind and genuine. It is only when her hair grows back from it being dyed by her to green because she wasn't accepting of her red hair that people actually start to genuinely accept her. Not for the green dye obviously but that's the part of the story where you see more people like Josie accept Anne. So basically in this musical Josie begins to accept Anne after she genuinely wants to help her out at the Christmas concert. Josie forgets her line and steps in and helps her out and that made her realize how Anne is not bad at all. She was very prejudiced towards Anne at the very beginning and she didn't like her and now she does <laughs> by the end of it. I'm so grateful I got to experience this incredible musical, especially seeing it with my dad who had fresh eyes and didn't really know much about the story prior to seeing this musical has really made me look at it through a different perspective and has helped me write this review. <laughs> If you live in or around Toronto, you should definitely check out this musical. The musical runs from August 16th to October 6th at the Lower Ossington Theater in Toronto, obviously. And that's all I wanted to say for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I'll be doing more and content until the season 3 premiere comes and stuff and I'm excited about that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you guys want. Turn on the post notification bell if you guys want to be updated on when I post. And comment down below if you 
you guys have seen this musical, what you think of it. If you want to go see it, I hope you get to see it. <laughs> Follow me on all my social media accounts. They should be appearing on screen right now. Knock on wood for Selma. I forgot about that. Knock on wood for Selma and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Mwah. Hey guys, it's me, 1239 here, and I'm here to you guys my Anne of, Anne of Green Gables, the musical Toronto review. And, my, and after the show, my dad told me that when he... Uh, and the fact that... <laughs> and... This, I think I actually saw someone tearing up to me. I, I really do applaud these actresses for... Per, per, per,